Hey guys, Jason with Longbottom Farm, and today I'm coming at you a little frustrated. We, um, you know, I like to show you the good on this channel, try to things that we've learned and share what's worked for us in running a multi species farm. And a lot of this is still new to us, so we're learning. And I'd had a big video plan today about 50 turkeys that were brooding with 100 chicks that we just got on farm. And then we were going to do some updates on the mobile range coop and then a new project that we're working on, which is a cattle working pen. And long story short, I think we've lost a calf. A little backstory here, probably about the last two years with our cattle, we have been just looking for groups of cattle on Facebook, Craigslist out through forums just different different paths i've never been to a sale barn so i've never bought cattle from a sale barn primarily because there's too many unknowns i'm no expert but i've heard enough stories to say that you know you'll get cattle that run through fences you'll get sick animals you'll get just lots of different things and so we've always shied away from the sale barn and in buying them from other farms not that i can guarantee anything but we typically go pick them up and that's so I can look and see and evaluate what I'm getting. You know, I think you can tell a lot about what you're getting by just the farm itself, what kind of condition it's in, how do the other animals look. So for about the past two years, we've been buying you know anything we could get a good deal on. The price of beef has been really high for what we do, which is farm to table. And we get animals on property, we raise them out, and then we process them for cuts. And the prices right now have just been so high that it's hard for us to do that and turn a profit. So we've been looking for better deals by finding herds someone's getting rid of and doing more direct farmer, approaching it as, you know, we can save you sale barn commissions. We'll come pick them up. We'll save you time, labor, the day. And, and we generally get a much better deal buying five to 15 at a time. A lot of those cattle will come bred, bred back, maybe with a calf. We've had a couple instances already where we've bought open heifers and it turns out they weren't open. <laughs> and we have a rule on the farm that we generally keep everything here at least one year to finish out one on our pastures. Uh, we've got some great pastures down on the river and we feel like it just gives it our touch of our version of grass fed beef that we produce. So they have usually stay here a minimum of a year. The other reason for that is that if those heifers or cows within the herds that we purchase are bred, then obviously we'll get a calf out of it and won't take any pregnant cows to the processor. We had these two heifers that we bought that we did know were exposed, but their body habitus, they just really didn't look pregnant. And anyways, they both end up giving birth. We got one, gave birth about three weeks ago. Baby looks great. They're doing good. And the other one just gave birth yesterday, I believe. Went down to do chores and found a new baby with a mama and she was licking it. Baby was looking, trying to get on the teat and they, they looked great. We rotate our cattle. They're in the same pasture, but the patch in the pasture, they had really taken down. And so for that reason today, we decided to just move them just one section further so that they're still in the same area. Keep the fences high enough where the babies can easily go under it without touching it. And whether that's right or wrong, I'm not sure, um, but I know I can't leave you know, the cattle in the, the area they were in because they had really just eaten it down. I, I should have moved it the day before, but since she had had her baby, leave things as they are. We knew where the baby was at, and I wanted to check them out. That's what I typically do when they're born. We've been deviating away from that a little bit. Maybe you can comment below or tell me what's right or wrong. You know, Do you check your calves when they're born? Do you go ahead and tag? Do you ban the bulls? We've always banded and tagged and done all that you know the first day or two when we can get them and it typically hasn't been a problem here lately i've thought about waiting as i've read that keeping the bulls intact up until nine months to a year can improve their growth and how much meat they're putting on in the end and so the last couple calves we've had we've actually done that we've just left them alone let mama and baby bond and not went down there and intervened well, today I noticed they were separated. I knew where the baby was. So I went ahead, like, all right, I'm going to go around and at least check, see if it's a bull, heifer. And in doing that, uh, the baby shot off <laughs> like crazy. And you know how fast they can be if you've ever seen calves. It's pretty crazy how fast they are at one to two days of life. And I saw it actually went through the fence. We have a five-strand electric fence, which is the electric's really bad on it right now. I've been over it 10 times and I think it's just been so dry. My grounding isn't great because the ground's so dry. We've been pouring buckets and doing different things. And luckily, you can see behind me, it's raining today. So 
kind of matches my dreary mood uh, over this calf, but I'll get to that point. So the calf bolted, obviously, when I went to try to check it and went through a fence. And it worried me how far the baby had went, but I knew her, followed it, got it, it bedded down, and I was able to catch her. It is a heifer. So we brought her back to where the mother was at and literally put her down in the pen, probably about 20 foot away from the mother, but you know, I try to keep the head facing, you know, so baby can see mom. And then the rest of the herd of the cattle were, were there as well, and put the baby down and it bolted a 180 away from mom and just kept going and went through one fence and then went through a second fence into a second paddock, then went on the other side through that fence into a neighbor's property. I'd never seen anything like it. I, you know, usually they, they want to be with their mom or they want to go bed down. Really tall grass. I don't know. And anyways, long story short, since then we haven't been able to find the calf. I've been down there looking, obviously. We have been continuously calling our cattle so that they would keep moving so that hopefully the calf will hear it and come. You know, after looking, we've probably spent two or three hours down there where we thought the calf was at and just haven't seen anything. And I do know that this calf is tired, stressed, and I know that a lot of that's my fault. I probably should have just in the beginning not even went, touched it, just left it. Uh, they would have found each other, and I didn't. I, I went up, you know, to check, and, you know, I, I think it was, I try to say to myself, maybe I, I was doing the good farmer thing, you know, want to check the calf, make sure it looks good. But at the same time, I think part of it was just my curiosity, putting a band on it right now, or it was a, cat, uh, a heifer now that I know in hindsight, but we've already got a couple other bulls on the property that will be castrating next month. And I could have just waited and, and not done anything. And that's what I should have done. And I did it. And I don't know if you guys have made these mistakes or not, but you know, we're learning. So now I'm just feeling like I sort of put my needs over the needs of the animals. Again, in hindsight, there was no need in me going to check the calf. I should have just left it. And then I questioned too whether I should have rotated them. But again, the, the strand that they were on was just really, they, they had eaten it down you know, wasn't just trying to keep the pastures good. They needed to move to the next lane within the same pasture. Uh, it's just a big rectangle pasture and we divide it into fourths. And so we just moved them into the, to the next fourth. So they're still in the same pasture. So that's where we're at. I'm going to get back ready and go back down here again. We've been after, since looking, all this happened probably about seven or eight hours ago. And finally just up at the house, taking a little break and trying to figure out what to do. And I guess there's not a lot to do. We either find it in or we don't. And, you know, as a farmer, one, it's frustrating because I questioned it. I, you know, I don't really even question at this point. I think it's obvious I, I shouldn't have approached the calf. And then maybe even after I approached the calf and it bolted, I should have just left it where it was at rather than grab it and go put it with mom in that. But then also, you know, there's a financial aspect to this. If I'm being completely honest with you, you know, that's a little defeating as well. So that's our video for today. We'll keep you updated. Today's video is actually supposed to be about baby turkeys. We just got 50 baby turkeys a couple days ago. And then we've also got another 100 baby chicks that we're brooding the turkeys and the chicks together. And that's what my video is going to be about today. And you know whether that's a good idea, bad idea. You know, just talking through that. And then an update on the mobile range coops, the video we did last week. And an update to a new project that we started which is our working pen. And actually it's almost half done and we're hoping to finish it up in the next week or two. And then we'll have a whole video on that. But again, we're just gonna do an update on that. But I think it's all just kind of overshadowed today by the dreariness of the day, which we needed the rain. I haven't seen this little rain in April, no thunderstorms, no nothing. We just haven't gotten any rain and we're finally getting some rain today. It matches my mood a little bit. Hopefully the calf will come back to the mom I think they are within distance where they can hear each other. So that gives me a little bit of hope. But again, I'm realistic too that this calf is, you know, two, maybe three days old, if that. And um, so I am actually going to get ready and head back down and do some more hunting and see if I can find this calf. We'll keep you updated. Uh, again, leave comments below. What do you do with your calves? Uh, have you had anything like this happen? And if you decide to roast me on this, go gentle. Like I say, we're learning, you know, just trying to do right by our animals. And, and I made a mistake. So hopefully next week I will have the mobile range coop video done. And then we'll show, and then we'll also have a video on baby turkeys and an update on this calf situation. 
All right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.